Hey, it's a privilege to have Dr. David Palmer on the show today. Uh, David is an orthopedic surgeon and a really good friend of mine. Uh, he also worked some magic on my shoulder, which I was just saying before we went on air is perfect still. And uh, so, David, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. And I'm, so, it, I'm just James, man, on, on this James, thing, I yeah. Hey, I agree. <laughs> I'm David, too. That's, that's what right. I prefer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, hey, so, so kind of at the, the epicenter of our show, we, we kind of talk about the idea of what it is to have a calling versus just a job. And uh, truthfully, you've been you've been a really good example to me. Like I've really appreciated our friendship. You were on the board at my last school, uh, and I just you know you're a guy who uh, flies from a higher elevation, you know, and just kind of understands those things. And so you've been a, you've been a really good example for me of what that looks like. Well, I think for me, you know, I can look back over my past and I can see where people had influences in my life mm -hmm. i can see where god was in my life and i can see where the devil tried to sidetrack me mm -hmm. and and i know i'm i'm doing what i want what god wants me to do i'm an orthopedic surgeon i came from a um a very humble background my dad was a uh, plumber and my mom went back to school when she was uh, when I was 10 years old to go to college to be, become a, um, an accountant. No kidding. Getting an accounting degree. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so my brother and I, we were, we came from very humble beginnings. You know, we never hurt for anything. We weren't poor or anything right. like that, but we were middle class, you know? Right. And, um, so I can look back on my past and I can see where, where, where God really had a tremendous influence in my life. My brother ended up being a professional baseball player. I knew that. Yeah. And, um, uh, so we were, both of us were really driven. I could say, I don't think we were always serving God. Right. You know, I think we had some, <clears throat> some issues probably in our lives. And then, you know, and then, but God, but right. God, you know, God, God stepped in, God stepped in, he changed yeah. our lives and we're both serving God now. And we That's have awesome. great families. We've, we've had some setbacks in our families. Sure. I've been through a divorce. He's right. been through a divorce and it was all related to really us. I mean, if you think of it, about it, it's all the men that, uh, <laughs> that t seem to be the problem yeah. and, 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 um, God really stepped in. He's restoring fam. He's restoring all that now. You know mm -hmm. things that have happened in the past. I had an anger problem, mm -hmm. James. I had a I had a bad. I would a, never have known that. Really just, bad yeah. anger anger problem. It probably helped me on the on the football field when I <laughs> when I was a uh, middle linebacker at Florida State. Right, but, but you know. It's also gotten me in a lot of, lot of trouble in the past yeah. with, Let, with my relationships and stuff yeah. like that. Let's Ooh. dig into that journey. I, I, I just, I, I kind of love the path. So often I'm chatting with students and, uh, and you know, they're like, hey, what am I going to do when I grow up? You know, and, 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 and I'm working with kids, young men, young women. And, and so often they have this misguided notion that they think that it's like some linear path. Like the, it's, a, it's this direct path that you've chosen. Uh, in almost all situations, it's never a direct path. It's never linear. It's always this circuitous route that gets us to where God has us at, you know. And so I would love to, like, let take take me back to, you know, you mentioned this idea of the 10-year-old the you uh, watching your mom go back to school to become an accountant and that that was clearly kind of one of those definitive parts. But take me back to the early you. Did like when was it that you actually wanted to become a doctor? Was that was that something that was early in your life? Did that happen later? What did that look like? I think what it was was uh, my both my parents were into um I guess outdoors and stuff okay. like that. Science science was really big in the family. You okay, know, we, that's cool. Uh I was I knew I wanted to be some kind of science degree. I went to buy, I got a degree in biology. But it was always about uh you know, I knew that's the, the, the way I wanted to go. I think I, I did, really didn't think I wanted to be a doctor until I observed the team doctors on at Florida State when Very I was cool. playing football at Florida State. Uh, 
both uh, Tom Haney and Doug Henderson were really the guy, the two guys that I looked up to, and they they convinced me, they gave me confidence that I can do this. I can right. I can become a doctor. Um, I spent I shadowed them when I was in in uh, college, you know, early mm-hmm. on in college, mm-hmm. and around my sophomore year, I said in college, I said this is what I'm I want to be. I want to be, I want Very to cool. become a doctor. Some of it also, I mean, you can also look at this. I mean, most guys that are playing college football have some desire. Maybe they want to play professional one Absolutely. of these days. I wasn't doing so good. At, <laughs> you know, I came, <laughs> I came in to a, a small, from a small high school in Tallahassee. I was a local guy and I, I was at a real small high school, uh, you know, a lot of these guys that came in to college were already just really, really uh, ready to play college football right away. I right. wasn't quite ready, I don't think. And even though I was a decent football player, I wasn't really – I wasn't starting material until my senior year. Okay. You made All-American status, so you, you I was a, got I there. was a uh, – yeah, I was an uh, academic All-American. Yeah. So, that yeah. that's what uh, – we had a great senior year, too. My senior year, we, we beat – first of all, we beat – Florida and beat Miami, <laughs> and, and then we 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 played Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl. We were we, actually we did not beat Miami. I, I for, forgot about that. We we lost to Miami. That was a, that was a, one of those you know Florida State uh, uh, one point. Uh, actually, we we went for two to go ahead, and we didn't make the two point conversion. Okay. So, okay. But anyway, the circuitous circuitous route is is true. I. I um, I really wasn't thinking about playing pro football at all after my sophomore year because I, I just wasn't – I didn't have as much success in college as I d- had in high school right. in football. Right, it's a, ju- it's a different level of play. It's a different level yeah. of play. It's the, the intensity level was just so much higher. And so I decided at that point that I needed to do something besides play football. Mm-hmm. I needed to uh, – you know, I wanted to be successful. So mm-hmm. I went into – I went into uh, – um, pre-med and, and biology degree and the rest is history on that one i, I love the fact though that you kind of you went in for to play ball oh, yeah. but the real work took place on the sidelines as you're observing these physicians and and team doctors and understanding what that looks like oh yeah yeah i mean what they did it, they were making athletes well they were they were great guys both of them were just great guys they were uh, community um leaders in the community they were um one of them was an ex-football he had played at florida state Mm. and both of them were just great guys in the community very well respected i observed them in surgery i observed them um you know when i was shadowing them and the you know taking care of patients and Mm -hmm. so forth Mm -hmm. Um, they they took they really took an interest in me because i had an interest in it and they they were a big part of my early success in you know biology and just my desire to become a doctor. Now tell us what that the process looks like. Like knowing that there are young people who listen to the show as well, uh, I'm always I'm always just kind of intrigued with what steps you had to go through. So you you kind of sophomore year you decide, hey, this is my route. Like this is where I'm heading. At the same time though, you're doing better and better and better with football. Uh, up to that senior year, you know, when things are going really, really well for oh, you. But, uh, yeah. like, tell, tell us about that path and kind of what that looks like. The the pre-med route is, you know, you have to take certain – all the medical schools want you to take organic chemistry, biochemistry, the, um, you know, physics. All those are prerequisites. You don't really have to be a science major to get into – Right. To get into medical school. You can be an arts or business – you know, anything mm-hmm. – any, Sort of made you just have to take those prerequisite classes because those are kind of the weeding out sort right, of classes, right. and um, so you you take those classes. You have and then you also have to take the MCAT, the med- medical college uh, exam, right. to to to, to uh, do well in those and do well in your your uh, prerequisites right. and your overall um, um, whatever degree you're you're going to go That's into. Right. And that's how that's typically how they they um, pick when you apply to a medical school. They those are the those are the two things they look at. 
your grade point average, what you did in these classes and your MCAT, and then they they uh, say you got an interview or you don't. Right, right. Yeah, that you're one of the the one of the rare guys. You've got both Florida and Florida State. Uh, that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. You know, I, I I was all Florida State, and actually, when I was looking at colleges, I looked at Florida really yeah. seriously. I looked at Georgia. I looked at Georgia Tech, and I was I, I had some. I, I was a pretty good student, so I had some of these uh, academic colleges that I, right. I, I looked at. Stanford. Yeah. When I got into to uh, University of Florida for med school, it was only two hours away from home. Right. And <clears throat> be honest with you, that's the only medical school I got into. Okay. So I went there. Yeah. I took it. Yeah. And you were fortunate, really. I mean, there yeah. are a lot of a lot of folks yeah. that you go on one year, two year, three year waiting periods. I mean, there's a yeah. lot. Oh know? yeah, medical school is hard. It was hard back then. It's hard now. Right. My son just got in, so he's you know he's thankful too. He got in at, at Georgia, but anyway, I I um, uh, you know I went to I went to med school at, at Florida. It was tough. I mean, we had we had a, luckily we had a really good dean of students that that really made it. Uh, fun for for a guy like me that went to Florida State. He yeah. he would he would egg me and you know <laughs> to say you know. Uh, <laughs> now, now, what made you choose the ortho route? Same thing. I okay. mean, I think m- those two guys were orthopedic surgeons, so okay. they're team doctors. Uh, but when I went in med school, I didn't. I, I kind of wanted to keep an open mind about things. I looked at um, OBGYN, you know, uh, and also I looked at cardiac surgery okay uh, but orthopedics was always really the one the main reason why i went into medicine was because mm-hmm. those guys were orthopedic surgeons yeah and uh, yeah so. I've, I've been impressed with like the this younger generation i've I had a lot of kids going into med school and whatnot through the years i've been so impressed with this this generation that they're actually asking questions about the quality of life and oh, so, yeah. like, if you're a cardiac guy, yeah, you know, literally everything you're doing is life and death. I mean, oh, so yeah. so you're always on call. Uh, had a, a good friend of mine in Savannah who was a cardiac th- thoracic surgeon, mm. uh, he, and he said he said he had never in his entire career, and he was a little bit older than I am, uh, in his entire career he had never been on a complete vacation with his family, because inevitably he was getting flown out to do a surgery and then flown back into vacation. Uh, and, you know, I think about the idea of 30 plus years in the, in the surgical room and he had never completed a vacation with his family. Yeah. Now for him, it was his calling. Like it was, he, he a clear believer and it was, it, it was absolutely what he was supposed to do. Luckily being the wife of a guy in that role, it was her calling as well. And so she was patient with that. But, but I, listen, that's, that's why, frankly, a lot of guys, they, they struggle with it because that idea of the, the pursuit of a work-life balance is hard. But it's, it's, it's better in orthopedic surgery, uh, at least from what I've heard from a lot it, of friends. It, it is uh, early on is tough in orthopedic surgery. You're taking a lot of call. You're doing a lot of trauma. So you are in, you know, I think that does take a toll on, on marriages and so forth right. and anybody that's in medicine. And you're right, the, the, a lot of the younger Guy, we find a lot of the younger guys coming out are a little more in tune with, um, you know, taking time for their family. Yeah, like the, I, I've actually been very pleased with that, that I'm, you know, rubbing shoulders with kids who are bright kids. But they're asking questions about life that I don't think I was asking until I was like 40s, you know, yeah. uh, about really finding a good work-life balance. And I, I th- I've I been think impressed with that. I think it's a good thing. But even the orthopedic residencies these days have an 80-hour work week. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. when I was training, that was not that wasn't in place. So right. I, it, we could have been on call every other night, mm. and you're basically living in the hospital. Right. So, um, yeah, I think I think even our um, orthopedic societies and all that they're they're really looking at at that sort of thing now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, having a family life or. More women are coming into orthopedics. Mm-hmm. You know, that's tough too. Being right. a woman in in medicine and now you're seeing basically there's more women in med school now than there are guys guys, right yeah Yeah. and i think that's a good thing i think i think think it's a real good thing yeah well yeah um when you when you look at kind of the the process of being a surgeon but also taking your faith into that setting 
T- tell, walk me through a little bit. We've talked, to, you know, off 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 mic a, yeah. a lot of times yeah. through the years. Uh, I was you know just so impressed when you did the surgery on my shoulder. Uh, you know, you, you prayed with me and and we talked, but you know, we were, we were friends before the surgery, so I mean that would seem normal. But I I was I was honestly not only was was I impressed with you praying and talking with me that there was a spiritual component. But then I listened to you kind of work down the other patients yeah. that you were going to be working on that day. And you were praying with them and talking with them. Uh, tell us a little bit about how, how faith plays a role in what you're doing as a surgeon. Just from what we've talked about previously, my, you know, I've had a, uh, with being in a surgical, uh, specialty, um, also, having a serious anger problem when I was, before I found Jesus, I, I, I went through a divorce. I I've had brokenness in my, in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's just been over the last seven years that I found Jesus. I, um, I'm really on fire for Jesus. I, love, I know you are. I, 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 know I mean, you I'm are. hungry about it. Nothing, nothing gets in the way of that. Right. So, the, it, it's a fiber. It's a it's a fabric of my life that I anything I do I pray when I before I do surgery I pray with my patients I the list of patients that I'm do, that I have for the night the night before I look at that list and I pray I pray that each one of them goes well that each each surgery that I do um, that that God would give me guidance he would he would give me wisdom make, to help me make certain decisions and so all the training that i have had i've done is also anointed by god i love that it's anointed by by by, by my lord and savior jesus christ and man it's it it, it that that takes some of the pressure off of me too Absolutely. because i know and i've seen miracles in the operating room mm. after i uh, you know got saved i've seen miracles in the operating room, when I'm fixing uh, uh, a bad fracture or something like that, one one specific injury that I remember that you know I was about to, it was a patella fracture, a kneecap fracture, and I was, it was crushed. It was in a hundred different pieces, and oh. I was putting it back together like Humpty Dumpty, and and all, and I'm about to give up and take that patella out you can do a patellectomy it's called you just take it out and you sew the tendons up around it they lose the problem with that is they lose a little bit of their strength the right. patella is there for a reason and but sometimes you have to do it if it's crushed in this particular incident instance I, I i took a deep breath i prayed and i went back to it and all of a sudden it just kind of fell in place mm. And this was this was the mother of one of my physical therapists. No kidding. She was a Christian also. Wow. And I know she had been prayed for. And so it's amazing how God works. Even That's in awesome. this day and age, miracles happen. That's awesome. I mean, this is a you know, God's God's the same today as he was back then. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 God wants us healed. There's promises in everything that, that in that in his work. I, I love that that as a surgeon, you're still making room for God. I think I think sometimes, you know, you don't have that in that field a lot. But to say that that it's not just your hands, but it's also God who's guiding your hands. Pa- patients are very surprised sometimes when I'm sitting there talking after surgery, or you know, even in the in the in the office setting, you know, I'm talking about God. They're like. You're a doctor. You're talking about God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, I think unfortunately it's kind of rare, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, now, now, uh, you know, when I chat with folks in different fields, do you ever face any consequences for sharing your like? Because you're really open with your faith. I mean, I, which I love. I've had one lady um, put a review out on Google that he pray with me, and she didn't really appreciate that. She doesn't huh. believe in God and so forth, and so yeah, I, I've okay. had that. I've had. You know, I haven't really. I, I've talked to my partners about God a, a good bit. They know where I stand, sure. But I haven't really. Um, I've held back a little bit of that in office mm-hmm. meetings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They know where I stand. They know I'm a praying man. They know that I that if they need a prayer, they'll come to me. Right. But I don't push that. You yeah. know, in, the, in that setting, I've um, I've loved just you know 
just the boldness that you've had uh, in you know in the operating room. I just I think it's phenomenal. And and what's what's so intriguing, like in in my work with church work, uh, you know, there's certain times when people are really receptive. Uh, that that's a great time to be able to talk about it, you know, yeah, and when yeah. you're standing, you know, in a, in a hospital gown and you're yeah. getting ready to go into an operating room, uh, you know, I would imagine people who don't even believe I'll bet you are yeah. renewed and refreshed. And that is and, a good time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's just one of those periods where man, people are receptive to hearing, you know, yeah, they are. And they are. Yeah. And even the simple thing of a prayer can make a huge impact. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, um, you know, I just, I, I think God, like, like we had talked about before, God has really given me a calling, mm-hmm. the calling of my profession. My pastor told, she, she had a word of uh, knowledge for me from the Holy Spirit one mm. day. And she said, she said, you will be able to practice orthopedic surgery as long as you want to. God okay. has anointed you to do that. And so I trust in him. Right. Trust is a big deal. That's right. And I tell you what, I haven't always had that trust. Even though I profess my, f- or, uh, you know, early on, and when even, uh, I mean, Coach Bowden was a, a fantastic Christian coach. Right. I was blessed. Right. He put seeds in me. Coach Van Hallinger was our strength coach. He put a seed in me, a seed that, and, and but I had never I and I I profess Jesus Christ, but I never. You have to you have to profess it with your or confess it with your mouth and believe in your heart. I don't think I believed it believed in my heart the That's way right. I should. And I right. didn't live it. Yeah. So, but now I do. I'm on fire for God. I don't. You know. I don't. Whatever happens, happens. It's like Esther said. You know, I could die mm-hmm. if I if I go up and talk to. To the king and 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 convince him not to kill Jews. Well, <clears throat> I, he 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 might kill me, mm-hmm. but I don't care about that now. That doesn't matter to me. I, you know, we're in a day and age, James. Where I mean, if you t- just turn on the radio yeah. or or the or the uh, TV set, and you know, the devil's after our family. He, he wants our family. It we it is it is crucial that we spread the word that we talk about Jesus. We talk about his promises and how good he is to us and that we give thanks to him. That's what I always had. I had a lot. And I've been blessed my life, but I never gave thanks mm-hmm. to, to really who my supplier of the, all that was, right. whether it be physical things or, you know, um, relationships or whatever. Right. I, Right now, I, I, I give thanks because I know who my the supplier of all that is is, right. is my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Father. Yeah. What was there a particular incident or event that brought about that transition seven years ago? Like you said, prior there to was, that, there know. was, yeah, there was. It, yeah. It's nothing that I'm proud of. It yeah. was. It had to do with uh, a divorce family, yeah. uh, a 16 year old son of mine that just got into med school. Mm-hmm him and I clashed Mm -hmm. and something happened that, that, you know, I had legal, legal problems. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, either I was going to lose my family or, you know, I was going to find, find Jesus. I think Jesus uh, came into my life. I didn't have an option. Jesus was, was my option. I, I, I asked him to just come into my life and, and change me. What happened was, is I was uh, one of my friends, my um, really good friend that that was the dad of one of the play the kids that played with my son on his baseball and football team. Mm-hmm. He said, "I want you to meet somebody." This was after all, after him and I were we we got in a fist fight. Sixteen mm. year old boy and I and his wow. dad getting in a, in a in a fist fight. I'm not proud of that at all. It was directly related to me and not being able to control my anger and not being able to, uh, um, you know, and then, uh, yeah, on the other side, you have a, a, a an angry 16 year old mm-hmm. too. And, uh, but my friend said that come, I want you to meet somebody. So I met, I went to a local restaurant, Carrie Hilliards mm-hmm. in Savannah, Georgia. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, met my pastor there. I didn't know he was going to be my pastor, but he was. He, uh, uh, his name is Kempe Womble. Okay. Kempe played football at the University of South Carolina, and he's pastor of a church there, him and his wife and his his, uh, his mother-in-law. And uh, they, they've been pastored there, or he – his mother-in-law started the church about 30 or 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, anyway, uh, he said, if you stay in my church a year, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll see a change. And I got saved, filled with the Holy spirit and, and, uh, and just seeing God move in my life. Miracles happen with like, like I mentioned about the, the miracle in, in the operating room and, that there's several of those. I can tell you several of those. I mean, it, you know, once you see God and you That's taste, right. you taste God. You taste God is good. Yeah. And He loves us, and He knows He He wants to He wants us to be His His children. We are His children. He adopts us as His children. It says that in the Bible. It says, you know, we we are His children. Yeah. We're the lineage of Jesus Christ. We're the lineage of Dave King David. I mean, when you look at that, it's amazing. Right. It's amazing how he transforms you. He may, he turns your heart in from a, a stony heart to a, a fleshy heart. Right. And, uh, well, I tell you what, it's it's been amazing. I, I can't tell you enough. I'm, and I can see relationships with my son change. Right. This is, and that's where reconciliation and healing Reconcil- starts. Yes, you right. Know, where right. you begin – where you really surrender yourself to to what is the path that God has for me? That's right. And then you, you know, you get to be able to look back to see he, this is what life looked like when I was doing it on my own, and this is what life looks like when I'm surrendering my life to yeah. the Creator of the universe. Yeah, you know, amazing. and get to see the vast difference that takes place in there. You know, and uh, and to be able to see the healing, to be able to see the rec- oh, reconciliation, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. and you've experienced that. And I bet you that's an amazing, I bet you that's an amazing experience as well. It, it is. It's an amazing thing. I have an, an ex- extended family. I've, I've been remarried. I have, we have, um, we, both of Christy and I have uh, six kids combined, mm-hmm. like the Brady Bunch, yep. you know, <laughs> my, her kids have had, or, you know, our kids, but her, her, her three have, have started having, uh, kids. So there, we have eight grandkids. That's awesome. Uh, my daughter is getting married, uh, in, um, in India in December. Wow. And then we're coming back to the United States and getting married in March. Wow. So my, my daughter's, my oldest daughter is starting a family. Very Jonathan, cool. my son is, is starting medical school. Um, my, my uh, youngest, Sarah, is in the School of Arts in North Carolina. She awesome. wants to be a uh, uh, Broadway type uh, actress, yeah. uh, uh, you know, singing, yeah. uh, uh, singing, acting, and and dance. Right. And she's 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 amazing. She's got amazing talents. Um, my m- one of my sons, Brandon, is just graduated from nursing school, and awesome. he went back. He's he. Uh, uh, He's in his he's in his early thirties. He went back and got a degree in nursing, and he's on a pathway to get to become a nurse anesthetist. Nice. So he's doing well. And uh, Tyler works for his father, a very lucrative company in Savannah, and they're yeah. doing extremely well. They have three kids, and um, and Morgan, who you know I probably know well. very yeah. well, she's she's something else, and they they have they. <clears throat> they have three kids as well and um they, it's just a blessing to have right. i mean i'm i'm blessed i have my quiver is full and <laughs> god is and, blessing me and, and you know i think about how cool that is like you, you know when we first started the show you you were talking about just the the realization where you saw your mom go back to school when you were 10 years old that that made an impact that that made a change oh, yeah. and i think about here you have this next generation of yours and now the next generation coming where they're able to see hey i know what dad was beforehand i yeah. know who dad is now and he's a different guy yeah. and to be able to watch and to see the impact of christ on someone's life <laughs> in real time to be quite honest you can't you can give a lot of lip service to Christianity, but until someone sees 
what you you're doing. That's right. That you love Jesus and that what what you know that's what they see. They see that. They yeah. see there's no compromise. That's right. There's no compromise and Jesus comes first. Jesus is number 1 in my life. Number 1 in my in Christie's life, my wife and we we don't miss we don't miss Sunday morning, not that that's, you know, unless we're on vacation or mm-hmm. something like that, but we we're, we're there in church where we're we're uh, I've made it a pact that I don't eat until I ha- until I eat from the word of God. Awesome. I get up early and I and I and I you know I have quiet time and I read the Bible. Yeah. And we go by the word of God. We go we 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 live our lives that way. So our kids see that. They haven't always been churched either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I mean especially you know all any of our all our kids haven't haven't had a uh, you know, a strong background and being, being in church all the time. And, but now uh, but they can see the impact. They in their dad. see it in, in their dad and, That's right. and, and they see what's happening. And yeah. so they, I think, you know, it's very important, you know, families are being attacked and, uh, it's very important that we as men take that, the ownership of, of, in leadership of, um, you know, showing our kids how to how to have faith. That's right. I mean, the the hope of the gospel is still the hope for our families, and it is still the hope for our nation. It Amen. Is. That's the only hope we yeah. have. That's I mean, the only hope our nation right. has right now. You know, it, 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 it feels like, you know, there are so many different subjects that we're working through as a society right now, and, and they cause a lot of instability. There's a lot, oh, yeah. you know, there's a real mental health crisis taking place right now. And a lot of that is just the instability of what is or isn't right. And so when, when, when we don't have that hope of the gospel and a standard of truth, then everything is flexible. And that, that causes real turmoil in people's lives. And yet the idea of the stability of the gospel and the truth of God's word is that anchor that holds even during the storm, you know, and, and, uh, it's a blessing for guys like us who really don't deserve anything, uh, and yet God gives us that opportunity to serve. I mean, you're you're the one of the guys that really had faith in me early on, and I can say that that, that you know you gave me an opportunity to take care of the athletes at, yeah. at, at in Calvary at, yeah. uh, at, at in Savannah, and I mean I appreciate that. Man. You made I, you a don't huge know, impact. On you don't kids. know how how great that was for me. Yeah. Just a just a uh, you know for someone like you to ha- to have confidence in me and my in my um, my practice and right. and everything and it, uh, it it's amazing how God works. He blesses us. It you is, know? yeah. You know, and that's really like you know we, we mentioned we were when we were off air before we came on, but uh, that's really kind of the motivation for this whole show is just the idea of 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 recognizing what it is to have a calling rather than merely a job, yeah. and and for us to really do whatever that is. So like I I look at this to say. Both of us at this table are in full-time ministry. I happen to be in Christian education, and you happen to be in surgery uh, in the hospital. But both of us, when we're doing it right, when we understand our calling, when we understand the, the high calling of what Christ has put on our life, Amen. both of us are in full-time ministry. Amen. You know, and, and that's, you, I, you know, neither one of us deserve that, and yet God heaps oh, it yeah. upon us. You that know? grace and, is amazing. Yeah, it's just... Grace it's just and mercy a, that he's shown to me and my family, and yeah. just, I mean... He, he took away the uh, generational curse of anger in my family. Mm. You know, that's just one a miracle, one of the right. miracles that he's done. That's the healing that God That's the give. healing. That's the that's restoration. Right. That's right. You know? That's right. So, well, listen, David, I just want to tell you, it means a lot for me to, to have you hop on the show. Uh, I really do mean it. Like, when you were, when you were praying for me uh, before that surgery, uh, that was like a picture it's been like an itch that I've been scratching for about 10 or 15 years to see men and women who are in the top of their game and yet to see them pl- placing Christ first unashamedly, uh, you know, with real boldness. That's honestly, that's the picture that our students in this next generation need to see. They mm-hmm. need to see the pattern of men and women who have chosen to have a calling rather than just that's a right. job. That's you right. know, and uh, I just want to thank you. you. You've been a big impact on my life, and I've really appreciated you as a friend. Um, and I've appreciated the idea that you've taken your calling as a believer seriously and taken that into your realm as a surgeon as well. Well, well thank you, James, for just 
given me the opportunity to be on this show. Uh, I I didn't know why, but now <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it's a blessing, and I, and I really do appreciate your friendship, and, and thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah.